Hey everyone! For those of you who've been following my Twitter, you'll know that I've put out a call for worlds that are too slow or too broken. Um, I received a very cool world from a, uh, a guy the other day, uh, which you'll probably see in the next regular vlog, um, and I was trying to fix it. Uh, this has led me to do some optimization work and to work on some uh, performance and some, 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 some metrics to help you along. So uh, this is Gen Z MPK's world. She's very, very kindly sent me, and she's here live with me. Hello. Actually, we're not live, are we? We're recorded. What are we? She's yeah. recorded here with me. Gen Z is uh, one of the tournament entries, and she has one of the m more punishing worlds on Fortress Craft. And so I've got a copy of it. So if I can see, partly if I can work out why it's slow, uh, and partly if I can work out any sort of hints or help. Um, so Gen Z, I, I think most people probably don't know who you are, and certainly anyone who doesn't sort of fiddle around with the... Um, the, the high ranked world. So, so tell us who you are and what you do and what you've done and um, tell us about your world a little bit and then we'll, we'll go over it. Mm, well, I don't re re really know what to say about myself. I mean, like, I'm a grown up. I play Fortress Craft. I've worked on video games. Uh, I work as a teacher. What video games have you worked on? Uh, I, I worked on uh, Just Cause 2, uh, and then I worked on some other projects as well that uh, didn't go much further. So. And you, you are a girl, this is, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so anyone who says girls like video yeah, games, tell. living <laughs> proof here. Um, so tell me a little bit about your world, because uh, I've talked about your world a couple of times, and it turns out I was wrong. So I've always told people this is a world of rabbits at war. Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually mouse people, uh, it says so when you <laughs> enter the world. Uh, and basically it's like, um, it's like uh, some kind of war drama thingy going on with the, with the different mouse people. I have like, I think it's like 13 different character models uh, around the world. And uh, they're having this war around the, some, uh, some material or resources. So I, I um, one of the things the game doesn't have yet that I, I do plan on putting in is, is signs, so you can actually put in a bit more story to the game. Um, yeah. But there is a problem with your world. Um, I, well, actually, let's let's, let's, be, let's be a little bit unfair. There's a problem with the Xbox. Um, so right now, this world actually. So I do warn you guys. So those of you who are interested in following this, there may be a few technical terms. If you don't get what I'm talking about. Feel free to ask us in the comments and I'll try and explain. So Fortress Craft is getting to the point where you are able to put enough detail into the world to actually start hitting hardware limits. These are the sort of limits that real game designers have to deal with. Um, the example uh -huh. I gave the other day with Morning After Care was if you play Gears of War 1, you've got four characters in the game. At any point where there are big firefights in the game, the game always... Um, gets rid of two of the characters on a side mission or a quest or something. So, you know, they've had to hide away the fact they can only draw a certain amount of player models with story. Fortress Craft, I have given you no limits. But what I haven't done very well, something I hope to address, I haven't given you very good tools to find out why your world is slow. Now, this is going to be a bit of a, whoa, what's going on? So I will bring up the Optimotron. So, what we've got here is a whole bunch of very, very, very tactical information about what's going on in the world. Now, in Gen Z's particular world, what you, you have not really done much in the way of customs. So if I press this button here, that turns off all the customs. So you can see here, pretty much you've only dealt with the, the voxels. You've not done, certainly in this scene, not too much work with the customs. So we bring up the optimizer. We can see that the custom count has only got about seven bars. It's not really a lot. That's good. However, the amount of custom types you're drawing is very high. So you're drawing a lot, you may not be drawing very many, but you are drawing a lot of types, and that can be expensive. The more types you draw, that's expensive. The more customs you draw, this is also expensive. When I say expensive, I don't mean it's going to cost you money, I mean in frame time. <laughs> but obviously right now, you don't, you can't tell. Now, not all custom blocks are created equal. So uh, along the bottom, again, this is still sort of placeholder interface. You can actually see those are all your customs along the bottom. And you can see the rotate, jump pad, uh, I can't read this, red matrix, I think, and something else. 
green matrix and red matrix, yeah. they're expensive. Now, if you've only got a hundred of these, that's okay. But if you've decided to have an area and make it out of those, you're going to feel it. I was talking to Andy, he had, uh, the example I keep giving, if you've got a solid block, make sure it's solid because otherwise the renderer will render the inside of the block. So if you're doing like a, a, a big, you know, a, a cube, make sure you fill it in. doesn't matter what you fill it in with as long as it's not transparent. Um, what we found on Andy's world is he's actually got a bunch of blocks he's made out of nothing but transparent blocks. And that's got its own issue because transparent blocks um, render all their facets as, as, you know, as they have to because they're transparent. So if you're doing customs, be careful about how expensive they are. But for those of you with a current world, um, you'll be able to spot them. And if you if you if it doesn't give a name, just give the objects a name until you find it. Um, so you've also got this crazy glowing shit going on here. Now, in mm -hmm. your world, Gen Z, and not like the next world I do with this, you've gone very heavily on the voxels. You haven't gone so high on the customs, but you're actually hitting the cap of um, the world now. You can, now, this is on Reflective Parallax Map, so as everyone is probably aware, the game runs better as you put the detail down. And the reason it runs better is not necessarily because it's, it's quicker to render, though it is. The reason it runs better is because it uses up less memory. So if I, if I do a quick spin to get everything loaded into RAM. So what you've got, again, it's quite technical. So we have a vertex cap of 80 megabytes, so you can fit 80 megabytes of vertex data. Currently, you're, this where I'm looking here, you're running at 71 megs, and you've managed to generate 132 <laughs> nodes for that. Now, Andy's world, for sake of argument, comparison, he can generate 160 nodes, which is the, the, the limit. And the reason he can do that is he's got actually less voxels in the world. Um, now, this, let's go back, we go back to the start, because I did find one bit, and it's nice and easy to, uh, to show everyone. So we've got this bit here. So green is the cheapest, Blue means it's beginning to get expensive. If it's a ready orange colour, um, that means it's it's expensive. And if it's if it's flashing like this, this is very very expensive. So this particular node here is probably the glowing one in the middle. That's probably ten times slower than the green one just above it. So if all your nodes are flashing, it, your world will run ten times slower. There's not much I can do. There's the, the fundamental limit of having to transform and rotate. Um, vertices. I mean, that, that's how it is. If you draw 10 times as much, it will run 10 times as slow. It looks just like you, by the way. But you've got <laughs> terrible skin condition going on there. I'll probably yeah, see well, a doctor about that. Uh, I'm pretty much as pale in, in real life. I don't know if you saw it earlier on the Skype video. <laughs> yeah. If you get a little bit blusher, some, some magenta lipstick, it'll be fine. So, <laughs> but we can look at why this node is slow. So, a, a part of it is because you've got. Um, You've got over stuff and you've got under stuff. So if you think, uh, I'm trying to give a good example, think of like honeycomb. Honeycomb has a lot of surface area because it's got a lot of hollow. So you've got like a an gouged out area there. So if you were to fill that in, you know, this, this area, you get a little bit of performance back. The problem is that this is a very gradual decline, the performance. Other things, you've got transparent objects. Again, these have to render all of their facets. And then you've actually got an internal bit here. But looking at it, it doesn't look too bad. However, if I look through the world, I can see quite quickly that underneath this, you've got a bunch more stuff. <laughs> that is part of the problem with the game. So we don't have any portaling, we don't have any BSP culling. We have to render everything. I'm considering cutting the world in two and having an above and a below. -er. But right now, if you have something underneath, it will render at the same time. But I mean, I, I don't know how well this is coming over to the stream for you, but you can see this is, this is in the game where you press F1 in the game, or the USB key, and you can already see this. So you can already see that your world has a lot of detail, and it's, this is all voxel stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, so I don't really have much in the way of solutions for this, but if you, when you're you know creating your world, if you, you're going on thinking oh, it's a bit slow, it will be in the next patch. So hit F9 and go, oh, this node was green, now it's blue. Can I tidy it up? Can I optimize it a little bit? And the main optimization you, you've got really is to not have so much in that node. Um, so even just as simple as just filling that in. What I've just done there has reduced the poly count by a small amount. Sorry, it's not a lot, but that's, that's 
That's how it goes. Whatever you do, don't be tempted to do something like like this, because like. Uh... Oh, don't be tempted to sort of fill it in again. If there's like hollow areas in, so if you if you were to fill this all in all the way down, um, let me use the mouse. I'm rubbish on the gamepad. I'm sorry. And if you were to fill it all the way down like that, you still have this hollow area. The trick is the game doesn't render what it doesn't need to. So again, I can just probably maybe I'll show you. So if you see through, no, I can. That's too much going on. So, but if you were to fill all this in here, you'd get a little bit more back. And I, I do apologise. It is only a little bit. Um, this is because rendering one poly, one voxel was really fast. But it's only when you've got so your your uh, node there it might have ten thousand too many polys, um, for oh. instance. Uh, and that's a lot of blocks. But when you, if you were to optimize that particular one, you you get a little bit performance back, but you get a bunch of memory back, and that's the important thing: is the memory yeah. that's allocated to the world. But um, I mean, the the reason is to like. Be as close to the max as possible without uh, messing up the game entirely. I mean, that that's pretty much how I reason. Uh, otherwise, <laughs> yeah. The the problem that is re really is if you've got one incredibly expensive node. As long as it's only got cheap nodes near it, it, it doesn't matter. It's only when you have expensive nodes and more expensive nodes and more expensive nodes that you'll actually start to see yeah. performance because there's a pool of of memory that we've got for the. Uh, um, the rendering. Uh, now this here, this is what I want to add. This is probably the worst thing you can do. Yeah. <laughs> because, so if you look at these blue blocks, they're, they've got all six facets exposed because they're surrounded. But this is absolutely the worst thing you can do. Hopefully. Uh -huh. That was the second thing I made in my world. Uh, interestingly though, you've now, now this is actually very interesting because these are listing as blue. Now that is interesting because this means they're not too bad, but it's because the node boundary is here so you've actually staggered your stuff across four nodes so none of these individual nodes are registering as expensive overall no. that's a very expensive pair of four nodes but individually they're not too bad um so that that's very interesting um which way is your <laughs> flying giant mining fortress uh it's um to to the left on the map now okay, yeah so, so if you go Okay, so I'll show you something. Yeah. So this has got, um, currently I've got what's called smart rendering of, of customs on. So off in the distance, you've got a tank. Now, the other guy's world that I was talking about has got so many customs. Oh my God. <laughs> He's got like 16,000 customs from his spawn. And I was like, this is why your world is crashing. But what he did, he, he took his world and it started to crash. He reduced the draw distance. More customs, more customs. Start to crash. Reduce the draw distance, more customs. So when I got his world, he's on draw distance too, going, I can't get in anymore. I'm like, because he, he should have spread it out a bit. So if you can see, you've got a tank there. This, so if you can see at this point, the customs are popping in. Yeah, it's quite a long way away still. Um, huh. So if we actually head over towards these, what it is, so now custom objects won't render at a giant distance. So if I... Uh, I'll show you what it so what it does. It literally all of all of that stuff there won't render <laughs> a long way away. Up, up close, it will still render, um, but walking around your world is not really something we've noticed. You know, it, it does happen, but it, it's not been uh, too noticeable. Again, out here it's quite cheap. This is all pretty good. It's all green or blue. That's fine. Not bad. But yeah, I'm saying that the oh, kind of, of optimization work, um, which is good because more optimization means you can do more, and hopefully, eventually, more optimization work means you can draw more as well. So again, let's look, look yeah. at these walkers. These walkers are heavily so yeah, so they're interesting. But I mean, I don't like that personally. But it's something that's fairly standard in computer games is is lot popping, and you might find that people actually design their objects a bit differently. So for instance, you might be able to design the legs to draw from a, a bigger distance. So you can see the popping uh, there, but we are talking about double the frame rate. You know, it's quite a, uh, a large increase in the work. So here we're looking at, um, oops, click. so here you're drawing about 2,000 customs, whereas beforehand you may have been drawing six or 8,000, most of which you probably wouldn't have noticed. But yeah, these are almost entirely customs, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. 
But you know, so that's uh, well. I mean, you probably could have uh, done the feet out of uh, like the, the the inside of the foot. Probably could have been. Oh, you should see the back of the. It's uh, it's actually on purpose. You should see the back of the foot. It's actually on purpose that it's like that. Oh, now that is attention to detail. I apologize. Oh Sorry yeah. <laughs> oh, Bolo, did you see the the new custom block preview? By the way, I don't know if you uh, saw that. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. I've been having so much trouble Sorry, getting them on the right side. <laughs> yeah, it's now, uh, it is now so much easier to... Uh, but is it possible to flip them? Like, uh, uh, if it's, you put it's exactly them down. the same. It hasn't changed. The way they place it is exactly the same. But because they preview, you don't have to guess whether yeah. or not you're in the right position. Yeah. I can see that. I mean, that, that's just suddenly become really easy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so so I um, I'd actually I've been thinking about doing it so you could actually use the deep once you've got a custom box selected, maybe you could use the deep head, right? Uh, it, it becomes tricky. There's not many controls awesome. left. Um, I love that idea. But yeah, but it can't be the deep pad because we've used that one. I think think I think the only thing I've got left is back. So I might be able to do it so an object rotates if you press back, maybe. Uh -huh. Let's have a look at this here. Let's see how this. Uh, so you can see we've got some. Uh, Orange flashing, and that's no surprise. That's where all the transparent objects are. You know, there's not really sort of uh, sharp, but it's also transparent. But also, you've got it very deep, and obviously, the more surfaces you have in your world, and then you've got some sort of huge. Yeah, there's uh, there's an underground right under there. <laughs> I didn't even know that one was there. I I, I spent I spent like a few hours in your world, and I mean, I still I've still not seen everything. Um, Dude, I've got people. In my world for like a week, and they they have still seen everything. <laughs> still no, still no conveyors. I found you're not helping people along. You're not helping people get from A to B. If you go down under this thing, there's uh, a bunch of conveyors down the shutting down electricity and the uh, uh, and stuff. Like uh, yeah, don't you see them? They're falling down off the anti gravity engine. Ah uh, no, I mean conveyors for people to walk along. Oh yes, I have in the subway. That's under the city. Is it, what, this city or the other city? Uh, the the first city. Okay, what well, if we head back? But yeah, that that's uh, <laughs> that's where I found out that uh, you can't really use the conveyor, the, the fast ones, in a in too long uh, stretch. You'll probably start to outrun the Xbox, yes. Yeah. But having said <laughs> that, um, and that's part of my goal. So the, uh, so the release plan, so um, what we're going to be doing is next week I'll be doing some Steam Hero stuff and some optimization work, some large scale yeah. networking, and then uh, hopefully the optimization will actually help all of the, all of this stuff. So how, yeah. do, I, how do I get to your subway? Um, to the left. It's actually kind of hard to find it. Uh, let's see. Am I... Uh, Skype isn't helping since it's not updating constantly. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, to the right of my gamer tag, there's like a, a small shed with a bridge over to it near the water. Uh, yeah, down. <laughs> Look down. <laughs> Back. <laughs> Where am I going? Where, where am I going? It's near the spawn at the water. Oh, here's, here's the bridge, yeah. <laughs> if only had a signpost, you could tell, yeah. Oh, do you mean, ah, do you mean here? There. Okay. Yeah, that small shed. Okay, so it's first left. And then you take the left again. Um, I'm not seeing it. Yeah, you walk past it. Oh, I say yes. <laughs> You're in a cemetery. <laughs> yeah, there. And then there's the elevator to the right. And you should take the the one with the orange on it. I see a green, yeah. a red, and a blue. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, the the orange one. Wow, I didn't, I didn't know you had any of this stuff. So let's, say, let's have a look. So uh, again, for those of you who are, uh, you can say you can hold down F1, you can look uh, at the, the layout uh, of your world, you can look at where things are. The one to the left is. 
you want to go up, sorry, up to the left? Or the, the one to the left is the finished or decorated. This one? Yeah. I, I need, need signs. Yeah. <laughs> It's on the list. It really is on the list. Uh, I mean, to my mind, signs are probably more important than doors and things because. Oh no! You, you you went uh, to the right. This is not where the subway is. It's to the. <laughs> uh, the the shockiness of the video <laughs> made sorry, it. Sorry, yeah, that's uh, my internet. So here is that conveyor. Yeah. Oh wow, that's cool. So come to the right will take you further. All right. And the reason why it's hard to find it because I haven't finished the area that. That you you're gonna come to, yeah. I mean, this would be a great area for cust for for the coloured lights uh, as well. Uh, oh, um, you're having an old tape. <laughs> this is the one you sent me. This is the uh, yeah. But I say with, yeah, I haven't been backing up <laughs> as I should. <laughs> but I say with the, with the coloured lights things. I mean, you can actually put coloured lights down here. I don't know if you saw Paul's there. He actually made the colour light change. So he had a skull that when you went near it lit you up red. The electric skull one here. If you look at the middle of the. Uh, between the well, whatever they're called, <laughs> you can see electricity there. Yeah. Oops. Oops. Oh. Oh, oh yeah. So now we're in the ground city. So, yeah. So you can see that. I mean, again, that's a that's a great example of um, use of the customs. So you can see that. No customs. That's. I'll say it, that's Minecraft for you there, and that's Fortress uh -huh. Craft. You ain't doing yeah. that in, uh, again, let's say if we look down here. Again, this use of customs is fine, because this is pretty much all the same custom, and that's okay. So if we look at the uh, optimizer, you can see your custom count isn't too high. You're yeah. cur currently rendering about 20% 20, 20 of the different customs, and that's okay. So you've got a lot of customs, but not too many types. But if you used all your yeah. different types of customs here, that will hurt rendering performance quite a lot. Yeah, I mean this is what I've learned since the uh, since like the custom locks and stuff came out. I mean this is a, a pretty new area that I made for the tournaments and stuff. Yeah, I mean this is saying I mean a lot of people seem to be we want more custom blocks, we want more custom blocks, but that's I do need to make well, I need to make everyone aware. If you've got 128 custom blocks, that's mm -hmm. fine. But if you start trying to render all 128 at once simultaneously, th that's your poor Xbox running like a dog. There's yeah. nothing I can do about that. That's, that's a fundamental way computers work, well, way, way video cards work. And I, you know, I'd, I'd like to be able to fix that, but it just can't be done. Uh, well, that's not quite true. There are ways, but oh, you know, I'd spend six months writing a, uh, a renderer that collapses the um, collapses them together. So with your with your section here, of course. So I mean, I, I'm not going to disparage your work, but your tunnel's quite plain and quite boring. But if only yeah, this one. If only you could <laughs> copy and paste all the way down your tunnel. How cool would that oh. be? It'd look as cool as this. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm I'm looking forward to copy a bit. So things like this that are very boring. You develop one section, you get it just right, and then you just that's it. You're done. You copy and paste your tunnel all the way through. Um, yeah. And it saves all the boring work. Uh, no. Just, just means you get to do the fun stuff. Again. It's oh, you. The floor here, you're gonna be pretty amazed. <laughs> that floor is made out of one custom block. Let's have a look. Again, I mean, that's something that Butcher Boy Toma does bang on about a lot. So that looks like lots of things. Yeah. But you've, as I have, so let's have a look. So uh, again, your custom counts, <laughs> not bad. That's only about 20 types. And I think a lot of that's in the rabbits. But again, what you've done is you've reused one custom block over and over and over and over in different angles. Yeah. Um, yeah, you yeah. should see it in the middle. I mean, I, I, I use different patterns on all six sides. So ah, I can oh gosh, really? So, with it. so you've actually created different... Did you do this in the game or did you like do it on paper first? No, I, I made it in the game. So this floor, like not, not the, the fences, but how... So is that really just one custom all the way around? Uh, you, you should see it in the center. There you can see like more different kinds of sides on it. Wow. So, unfortunately, I, to do this, I need to build a big, I need to build a bigger cube. So, what you're saying is your floor is one type of custom block that you've drawn yeah. different things on different sides. Yeah. So, the, yeah. So, so the, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll 
Congratulations. Yeah. So that's that's the mark of professional work. That's what you have to do when you want to get performance out of something, and you know you've got limits. And that's something I think a lot of the 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 fortress type people they they're new. They have to learn this stuff. Yeah. So what I yeah. would have done as a, as an amateur, I can see at least three patterns there. I would have done one block for that, one block for that, and one block for this. But what you've done, mm-hmm. is you've got one block, and you've done different things on different sides. So me, yeah. being rubbish, I would have probably just done one block and then just filled the underside in red or, or black or something. But reusing yeah. it like this is fantastic because uh, that really helps performance. I mean, also, you've only got 64 custom block slots. Yeah, so, right. Uh, yeah, you'll probably notice the lighting looks different uh, to your version as well because this is the yeah. lighting model. So some people might have find that they need to do a little bit of uh, tweaking on their worlds to uh, do the lighting changes. Um, yeah. But it shouldn't be too much. Blue is still blue and it defaults to blue. Um, I might make it a little bit less blue and a little bit more uh, orangey blue. Um, I'm sorry, like a brighter blue. But yeah, that's that's a yeah. great example of uh, of optimal work. <clears throat> so, from from my point of view, as you are, <clears throat> should we say, a little bit, a little bit, uh, how to phrase this nicely, uh, keen on on modelling stuff than a lot of people. Is there anything that you would like that I haven't done yet? Any tools or features or, or something that would help you make better worlds? Um, let's see here. Yeah, I, I want the incandescent blocks, blocks that are like the Easter egg. You know, like they they don't uh, get the uh, shading, like they're constantly being in one color. Uh, they're f- full bright. Yeah, and maybe with a like a uh, glow shader on it. You know, like a like an edge, kind of like the selection thingy, hmm, okay. but not. Uh, I, I could certainly I don't know. add a custom type called glow, so I. Can... But that's visually. And it's quite it's quite easy to um, yeah, I'll make a note of that one. So it's quite easy for me to make a uh, I could I, I mean I could, very quick I can add a, a custom type called Fulbright. So if you set something to Fulbright, it doesn't take the world's lighting; it just glows. Um, yeah. Yeah, that, that's very easy to add. <clears throat> um, uh, that would be amazing. Yeah, I mean th- th- the thing about the, there is bloom in the game; it's a bit subtle. Uh, yes. Oh, in fact, I think I think the blue might be broken. Uh-huh. Huh. Okay. Yeah, because that that's what I noticed that the the world looked strange with the color. Yeah, I may have accidentally broken the blue. I'll I'll check into that. But yeah, um, I I don't do a proper HDR pass because again I'm kind of hitting limits on rendering <laughs> and things. Um, yeah. But yeah, okay. A glow, a glow in the dark block is basically what you're asking for. That's that's uh, yeah. that's like an easy thing to add. Block, basically. Um, hmm. Let's see what else. Um. I mean, that that's pretty much what <laughs> I've been yelling about. No, oh, wait. What? What? The, hmm. Yeah, now I'm on the spot here. <laughs> Everyone's gonna hate me for not saying their suggestion. That's it. Well, I'm uh, some other guy who wants blocks that sparkle. Uh, that's fine. Uh, I don't mind doing that. It, it, my only thing is, I need to make I need to make stuff that's useful for more than one person. That's my only sort of okay. caveat. And um, glow in the dark blocks. That's fine. Um, admittedly, with the new white lights, you can probably yeah. get a lot of the way there because you could just put a white light near it. Um, just very quickly, yeah. um, can you direct me towards the the alien excavation bit? I think it's alien. Yeah, uh, it's near the back the, of the tank, isn't it? To the left from here on the map. Uh, and you'll see a, a pack of birds information on the bridge that go to the right from the ri- bridge. Yeah, you need to turn right. <laughs> Let's see. Um, uh, yeah, uh, right there, down by the par- uh, antenna. Oh wait, antenna, oh. antenna, antenna. Uh, so you're you're a little yeah. you're a little bit lagged. So that's uh, yeah. Well, my video is a little bit lagged, rather. So you you go down where the antenna is. No, not that there. 
that's too sh close. Um, let's see here. Oh, there, where the people there are. You follow them in where where there's like a clearing in the ground. Oh, yeah. So here, here we go. With an example. Yeah, that's what it is. I so I uh, admitted there's no. I don't know if you're able to see this, but what I did is I put the warning lights around because you've got the the chevrons there. But so you've actually got the the warning lights going there, glowing a bit. So. Um, Give you an idea, this is the sort of place, because we were trying to think of uses, and all I can think of was submarines. This is probably a good place so you could really actually use the uh, the glowing here. So you've got the, the you know, you, you'd obviously, you'd model in lights of some sort, you know, a red block of some sort. Um, yeah. And, and that sort of thing. Hopefully the, the custom lights will actually let people, so there's there's the emergency lights there. Oh. Uh. Um, they, they won't look like that. Andy's still doing some better ones. Um, but generally speaking, I'm hoping people are going to use the machinima lights on visible. And it's just the light you see, not the um, uh, thing. I have to say, on the other hand, uh, although I, I admire a lot of your work, this is horrible. Oh, my eyes. Oh, it's, uh -huh. the encoding on YouTube is going to eat this. It's so bright. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> but yeah, so, okay, so, so though you've got the warning lights up there, here, of course, we've got the, the blue lights. Um, oh, I, I thought it was uh, only in like a node area. No, that, that's um, really interesting. What it does is, let's see if I, let's see oh, if I, I did a video, but probably, I probably didn't explain it very well. So if I put a blue light there, and I put a red light here. When I'm here, that light's red, and so's that one. But if I move towards this one, uh, yeah. they both turn blue. Now, it's up to you not to have them too close together. Yeah. Um, and if I put a, like a, a green one in the middle, so if I'm here, every I mean everything is, is red here. Everything is green here. Everything is blue. Yeah. So you've, you've got the opportunity to say you could light stuff and you can hide these, so you don't have to be able to see them. So if you take the uh, the green light and you put it in the bed, let's just hide yeah. the green light. Let's pretend you haven't done that. Um, <laughs> right. So you've got yeah, the I wish green. the the lights would only show up for for like the the person who works. In yeah, the world, that's the change. That's or that it had to turn it, turn it on rather than them being turned on in the settings from the yeah. start. The default will be that the server sees the lights because they're creating the world, but people who join your world won't see them. That's the the current decision. Um, yes. The plan is to get nice models for all of these and then let the server decide. Yeah. But, um, if you let's say for the sake of argument, you you've got a work, you could have a a world lit in green. Pretend that's all green, and then you can do it. So when you walk near them, you've got some sort of emergency thing that kicks in. Now, although you can't see that green light, when I move towards it, I count as being closer, and then hopefully, assuming I've not covered it up, and apparently I have, there we go, everything goes green. Even though you can't see any green lights there, all of those lights go green when I get closer to it. Does that make sense? So you can hide trigger lights in the ground or behind walls. So when you go near them, all the nearby lighting will change to that. Yeah, so that is awesome. So you've got the opportunity to, to say, what what I'd like in this, I'd, I'd like a bit more uh, life. I'd like a bit more sort of animation and movement and things. So uh, Yeah. So there we go. Um, that, that's a, it's a bit more about the custom lights, which I, I'm very happy with. A um, bit more about optimization. I mean, overall, this is already running a lot better um, because of the, the custom culling. That really helped an enormous amount. Um, with your world, you're you're hitting through the the voxel limit. We've got plans to fix that, but that's a longer term one. Um, what yeah. I want to be able to do is draw much more world, um, but we we do need to do some uh, quite horrible optimization work to do that. There's no rabbits. Uh, sorry, mice in this building. It's like deserted. Yeah, I, I, it was more of an idea that I wanted to be. Like I wanted to build a building which uh, mainly consisted of towers, or I, I'm not sure what what the exact term is. Oh, but so it's, it's a it's a very vertical building made of and yeah. you've got the balconies and things, yeah. Yeah, but it would mainly be empty in the middle, so it wouldn't be that uh, laggy. So um, I, I'm alright saying I think Sweden's got the highest standard of living in the world, doesn't it? Yeah, perhaps. So, so what we're seeing here, this is a typical Swedish building, if, I, if I'm correct. And this is just like where tramps live, isn't it? 
Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, like, my house is bigger than that. Oh, I should hope so, yeah, absolutely. And you've got the, the stilts because of all the flooding over there and everything. Oh, it's, yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's actually polar bear protection. Ah, uh, yeah, because I'm sure you get a lot of polar bears there and penguins and uh, camels. <laughs> oh, wow, so you've got the, the giant statue. I like that. Didn't see that one. Before. Yeah. So yeah, hopefully, I mean, as time goes on, we'll, we'll get more customs and we'll work out ways of rendering things quicker. Um, yeah. But overall, uh, the main thing is when you get the tool, in your, in your case, start looking at those flashing nodes. Some of your custom blocks are a bit expensive, um, but overall, pretty good. I, I hope that's helped. I hope that, that, you know, this is going to be quite a long one. This isn't going to be a, hey, cool, new features. This is going to be a bit more of an in-depth look at people's worlds for, for those people that are interested. Um, and hopefully, if you're having problems with your world, hopefully you'll, you'll learn a couple of little hints and that'll help you. But I'd like to thank you for having you on Gen Z. It's been, uh, it's been yeah. a pleasure as always. Um, I wish you a lot of luck in the tournament. Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, well, I think you're going to need it. Some of the tournament worlds, wow. Really, really, really amazing. Um, yeah. I, hope, I hope some of the other tournament world guys, I hope to get those in. I'd like to get that Star Wars world in. I'd like to, to show him about putting custom lights in and talk to him about, again, optimizations and speeding stuff up. Um, yeah, I'm sure Ark would love that. Well, if, if, I, if, if, he, if he's watching, drop me an email. Everyone knows my email address. It's on the front page of my website. Uh, so it's info at projectorgames. No, no, it isn't. Info at fortresscraft.com uh, or fortresscraft related matters. I do read all the emails. I don't reply to them. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't. I don't have enough time. <laughs> but thank you once again for having on, Jesse. Good luck in the tournament. Uh, and thank anybody you. else? Let me know if this is useful to you. If you watch this, what you go... Hmm? What about the joke? Aren't you going to have a well, joke? Well, that's your joke. You're the guest. Do you have a joke? Oh, oh. oh I don't know any jokes. You don't know <laughs> any jokes. Come on, that's not true. Uh, you could do a joke oh my... in Swedish. You must have a funny Swedish joke. Dude, I have no idea. You like... don't know a single joke. Come on. No, I mean, like, I'm so old. <laughs> You're so old you don't know any jokes. Yeah, no. Really? Come on. You must be a think of a joke. I mean, I'm more of a like a practical joke person. Well, 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 tell us your best practical joke. <laughs> oh, I, I meant more like uh, like Easter egg type of stuff. Like the, the stuff that I do in my world or whatever. Like the, the guy that's being shamed and... <laughs> The, has been sunk in the the, the ocean, stuff like that. Like, okay, so uh, I'm having a guess that Norwegian people think Swedish people are stupid. <laughs> is that is that true? No, that that's totally untrue. But is, I mean, that, is, it, is yeah. it true that they think that? Because English people all <laughs> think Irish people are stupid, American people all think Polish people are stupid. You know, it's that sort of cultural... <laughs> so is that true that, that, that Norwegian people make a joke that Swedish people are stupid? Oh yeah, they're, right. they're over zealously nationalist. I mean, I have no idea why, but yeah, I think it had something to do with like uh, World War Two and Swedish uh, uh, troops were sending over like uh, uh, what's it called prisoners to Nazi uh, Norway as it was then since it was occupied. Wow, right. well, uh, English people, as far as I can tell, think Irish people are stupid because it's funny. I think that's the entire thing. Yeah. Which is weird, because I've never met a stupid Irish person. All the Irish people I know are brilliant. Anyway, here's a joke about Swedish people. <clears throat> um, <laughs> I'm reading this, by the way, and if you're Swedish, I, I, uh, I, I mean no disrespect. <laughs> there was a fire in the Royal Library in Sweden, and the king was utterly depressed, because both books were burned, and he'd only got around to painting in one of them. <laughs> Do you even have a king? I've no idea. Yeah, he's uh, he's dyslexic, so <laughs> you don't know. Ah, ah. See, I didn't even get the joke, and I already thought it was funny. So there you go. Well, if you're on again, make sure you, you plan a joke. Sai si spends hours trawling for jokes on the internet. Um, but thank you guys for watching. Yeah. If you do, um, I, I'm not going to say rate, comment, subscribe. This is not a, a work. This is me trying to help the community a little bit more because Fortress is getting complicated. So if this has been helpful to you, let me know. I know you want ladders and doors. It's on the list. Thank you for watching. I can actually tell something interesting though. Oh, go, uh, go, go. I can tell 
Or how to do glitch block. We should probably leave that for a different video. I think that yeah. no one will watch it. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do that in a video. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we'll do that. No, we'll do that next time. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. See you again soon.